everyone i am muhammad amar i hope all of you are with good health today i am going to start the phylum sarpa mastigophora and in this video i will talk about the sub phylum mastigophora before i start the sub phylum mastigophora uh, let's discuss the protozoan taxon most protozoologists now regard the protozoa as a subkingdom consisting of seven separate phyla within the kingdom protista these Phylum are the phylum Sarcomastigophora, Labyrinthomorpha, Epicomplexa, Microspora, Acetospora, Maxospora, and the phylum Ciliophora. These are these are the seven phyla within the subkingdom Protista. We'll discuss these phylum one by one, and now I'll start the phylum Sarcomastigophora. The phylum Sarcomastigophora. The number of protozoan species exceed 38,000, with over 18,000 described species. Sarcomastigophora is the largest protozoan phylum it, because it contains 18,000 described species out of 38,000 protozoan species. Sarcomastigophora has the following characteristics: number one, these are unicellular or colonial; then, the locomotion by flagella, pseudopodia, or both; autotrophic saprozoic or heterotrophic a single type of nucleus is present and sexual reproduction usually present phylum sarcomastigophora is further divided to subphylum mastigophora subphylum sarcodina and subphylum actinophora in this video i will discuss the subphylum mastigophora and in the next video tutorial i will talk about the further subphylum sarcodina and actinophora the subphylum Mastigophora has two classes, the class Phytomastigophora and class Zoomastigophora. Subphylum Mastigophora, the members of the subphylum Mastigophora use flagella in locomotion. Flagella may produce two-dimensional hip-like movements or helical movements that push or pull the protozoan through its aquatic medium. The class Phytomastigophora Phytomastigophora possess chlorophyll and one or two flagella. Phytomastigophorians produce a large portion of the food in marine food webs. The marine phytomastigophorians include the dinoflagellates. Dinoflagellates have one flagellum that wraps around the organism in a transverse groove. In, in addition to chlorophyll, many dinoflagellates contain xanthophyll pigment which gives them a golden brown color. At times, dinoflagellates become so numerous that they color the water. Here is the dinoflagellate, you can see. Next, the euglena. Euglena is a freshwater phytomastigophorian, while the dinoflagellate was marine. Each chloroplast has a pyrimide, which synthesize and store polysaccharide. Some euglenides lack chloroplast and are always heterotrophic. The euglen orients lights towards of certain intensity, a pigment shield, the stigma covers the photoreceptors at the base of flagellum. The stigma permits light to strike the photoreceptor from only one direction, allowing euglena to orient and move in relation to a light source. Here is the structure of euglena. And then the wall box. Wall box is a colonial flagellate consisting of up to 50,000 cells embedded in a spherical gelatinous matrix. Asexual reproduction occurs in the spring and summer when certain cells withdraw to the watery interior of the parental colony and form daughter colonies. Sexual reproduction in wall walks occurs during autumn. Some species are dioecious, having separate sexes, while the other are monoecious, having both sexes in the same colony. The specialized cells differentiate into macros macrogametes or microgametes. Here is the wall box, the colony of wall box. This was all about the class uh, Phytomastigophora. Now we will discuss the class Zoomastigophora. The members of the class Zoomastigophora lack chloroplast and are heterotrophic. One of the most important species of the Zoomastigophora is Trypanosoma brucei. This species is divided into further three species. The Trypanosoma brucei, brucei and the tri Trypanosoma brucei gambians and Trypanosoma brucei rhodesians. So these are the species, these are the subspecies of the Trypanosoma brucei. 
The first of the three species is a parasite of non-human mammals of Africa. The latter two cause the sleeping sickness in human beings. The sissy fly are intermediate host and vector of all three subspecies. When a sissy fly bites and when a sissy fly bites an infected human or mammal, it picks up parasite in addition to its meal of blood. Trypanosomes multiply asexually in the gut of the fly for about 10 days, then migrate through the slavery glands. When the infected sissy fly bites another vertebrate host, the parasites travel with slavery secretions into the blood of a new de definitive host. The parasites multiply asexually in the new host and again transform through a number of body forms. The parasites may live in the blood, lymph, spleen, central nervous system and cerebrospinal fluid. When trypanosomes enter the central nervous system, they cause general uh, apathy, mental dullness and lack of coordination, sleepness develops and the infected individual may fall asleep during normal daytime. If detected early, sleep sickness is curable. However, if an infection has advanced to the central nervous system, recovery is unlikely. When a sissy fly feeds on vertebrate horse, this is a diagram while it is feeding on the vertebrate horse. And this is the structure of Trypanosoma brosi rodsian, which is a subspecies of Trypanosoma brosi. So, thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. This was all about the subphylum Mastigophora and its two classes the Phytomastigophora and the Zoo Mastigophora. And in the next video tutorial, I will talk about the subphylum Sarcodina and Actinophora of the phylum Sarcomastigophora.